good afternoon to everyone uh thank you for joining in and i would like to take this opportunity to quickly thank our sponsors our platinum partner apps flyer our digital growth partner in mobi our gold partner unreal engine our mobile gaming partner mobile premier league our creative partner ethanos digital our institute partner asian institute of design our association partner vrar association and our knowledge partner bretsia Well, wow. so with that, I would like to commence with our next panel discussion. This discussion is on the topic the future of gaming in cloud, and I would like to start with introducing our moderator, Mr. Sarang Atri, co-founder of the Gaming Project. We welcome you, Mr. Sarang. Thank you so much. So yes. happy to be here. Thank you. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome our esteemed panelists, Mr. Pawan Avasti, Head Consumer Marketing, South Asia, Nvidia. We welcome you, Mr. Avasti. Mr. Viral Mehta, VP Engineering Loco. Welcome, Mr. Mehta, and Mr. Rajesh Shivani, Customer Engineer Manager, Cl Google Cloud. We welcome you, Mr. Rajesh. Hi, Thank you so you. much for joining in. I would now request Mr. Sarang to please take over. Hi. Um. So yeah, again, I'd like to just thank everyone for being here, and uh, thank you, um, Karma, for just getting us all together. Uh, so first, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, jump right into it. Like you know, uh, just like the topic of this panel, what does uh, the future of gaming in cloud mean? Like, what does it mean to all of you? Um, yeah, I'll start with you, Mr. Paul. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? So you just broke off. the last one but yeah oh i'm so sorry yeah um so yeah just like i was saying ki uh, what does uh, it means uh, the future of gaming in cloud to you uh it, it's for me uh yes yes on say it's for you got okay, it got it so uh yeah so uh we have um i mean nvidia is 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 right at the beginning of the been there right at the beginning of the pc gaming revolution which started way back In uh, late nineties, mm -hmm. we'll continue to do that. While our larger mm -hmm. play, of course, remains around the PC in its physical format, uh, whether it's laptop or desktop, mm -hmm. and that number is really big. Basically, I mean, we say oh, yeah. that one million gamers are there in the world right now. Yeah. But if you look at the mobile gaming as as an opportunity, that seems even bigger than the PC gaming and the you know uh, the gaming that we have. So from mm -hmm. that perspective, that uh, if there is a possibility of taking that PC gaming to the cloud, that appears like a massive opportunity for us, and mm -hmm. uh, we we do actually have a play over there uh, with our one of the services called GeForce Now, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is is of course is not available in India right now, but hopefully mm -hmm. soon we'll see the same thing. Yes, I mean in a nutshell, I see a great opportunity for all of us. Uh, when we think about cloud gaming as an opportunity, definitely. And to be honest, what you said is little worrisome for me because then my competitor will be in India. <laughs> I'm literally running a cloud gaming platform. But no, yeah, but I'm going to ask you. There will be greater opportunities for all of us. Yeah, lot more. Oh, de definitely. To Def de definitely, sir. But I'm going to ask you less questions now, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'll ask the same question to you, Mr. Rajesh. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, Saran. I think from a Google's perspective, it, it's got multiple dimensions to it, right? Uh, but even before I talk about Google, the whole concept of cloud gaming uh, is is increasing, right? And and, and I'm sure you, you know the numbers as well uh, in terms of adoption, uh, right? Uh, where where consumers are able to access it in a much more uh, you know seamless seamless in the sense that they don't have to worry about devices and so on, right? So the whole concept mm. of cloud gaming is gaining traction, and hence uh, there are multiple dimensions that uh, Google looks at it. One is being mm. a, a cloud gaming provider, service provider, right? With, with Stadia, mm. which is not launched Stadia. in India yet, but uh, globally mm. in in many markets it is already available, and it makes it much more easy to consume and the way you use uh, that, right? And engage consumers accordingly. And the second mm. side of that is all the technology that powers gaming, uh, be it cloud or otherwise, but more so cloud. There are um, mm. Services Google Cloud has, or other cloud providers also who have uh, similar services that allow you to, you know, make them more uh, more uh, scalable. Uh, look at new areas and new concepts that you can adopt. A lot more uh, testing can happen. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the overall management of it, becomes much more seamless to the to the provider, right? So there's yeah, from a yeah. perspective, we look at it from multiple lenses in that sense, right? 
being a service yeah. provider, uh, which is the true cloud gaming service provider, and being the mm -hmm. technology provider on the other end of the spectrum. So that's how we see it. And I think in both both areas, there's tremendous opportunity because uh, you know the the movement towards cloud gaming is only going to go up and, and uh, further from here on. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, Viral, I'll you know, just the same question. You will have a little different perspective uh, given what, you know, uh, what Loco does. But yeah, I'd love to hear that. So um, quickly, uh, Loco is uh, um, India's biggest uh, game streaming platform um, that on game streaming. And so mm -hmm. while we are obviously in the cloud and all of that, uh, my insight into this comes from my previous life, where I was working on uh, mobile phones and AR, VR, and at Microsoft. And uh, so the way I see the term cloud gaming, I see it as there are two different meanings of it. The the first is the world has the the gaming world since Fortnite. Online games have become more and more uh, more cooperative play, play in the cloud, no more people are no longer like, like shipping DVDs and just playing quick skirmishes. You're playing long session games online yeah. with other actual people. So mm -hmm. all of that obviously has to be hosted in the cloud. So there is this whole ecosystem of being able to run platforms that people mm -hmm. like you know, Google, uh, NVIDIA, Epic is also trying to do this. A bunch of people are trying yeah. to provide that. Yeah. And then the whole yeah. uh, commerce around it and everything that comes with it, social networks yeah. around it. Now Fortnite is doing concerts inside Fortnite. So yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. Or when people say cloud gaming, that is one place where my mind goes. The other place where my mind goes is this uh, this promise that uh, companies like uh, Microsoft and Google uh, along with help from companies like NVIDIA and uh, Sony and all these guys, um, is that how do I make high quality gameplay hardware agnostic? So mm -hmm. Microsoft mm -hmm. had a project called Project Rio that never really actually shipped, but they mm -hmm. actually had a server farm full of Xboxes and saying, okay. we will do all the rendering in the server mm -hmm. farm for your games and somehow create this very low latency magical control where you can just control it play on mm -hmm. any underpowered PC and play any high, uh, any console game. Uh, Google Stadia seems to have a similar promise. That's right. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. aspect of what cloud gaming is, uh, which is how do we make games hardware agnostic where we can just take all of the rendering and all of the raw horsepower you need to make beautiful yeah. games uh, and yeah. put them away behind a cloud service and give users the ultimate experience on their underpowered devices. So yeah. that's how I look at these things. And uh, the first part, obviously, is go it's here. It's going to continue. It's only going to grow. The second part is still a technical challenge that needs to be solved. And I'm sure smart people, people way smarter than me, are working on it right now. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to follow up with you on that, because there is a uh... There is a certain service, I think, uh, like the second part of that, of that, of your statement, basically, uh, was uh, something of an interest because uh, there are services like uh, I remember I do uh, think AWS has a service called Lumber uh, Lumberyard, right? And I think Stadia itself, and it's I remember in your uh, like the announcement video that you had, you uh, Stadia post uh, showed like a entire way how rendering would be done by the click of a button. And you can like just like filters can be added to a uh, development flow. That's right. So, yeah, there is there is um there's a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, at that time you're right. Um, actually, uh, so my next question, I'm a little biased because I'm the founder of a cloud gaming company. So I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm gonna be totally biased in the next question. Which <laughs> version of cloud gaming? The the rendering in the cloud version of cloud gaming? Uh, no, I'm uh, no. Uh, uh, the gaming project literally lets you play games. So it's a cloud gaming platform. Where you can come and you can play games. We do oh. have other plans how we can you know make it evolve, but as of now, this is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, to my next question is literally I'm a little biased just because I believe it can. But my question is that can you think cloud gaming can become one of the primary mediums to play games? Right now, we are still you know focused on consoles or PC games and you have the whole uh, like 
there are so many consoles out there i can like name a lot of them but yeah what do you think do you think cloud gaming eventually with the rise of 5g just around the co- uh, around the corner can become the mainstream medium um so we'll, uh, let's go around this time where will you go first um the world is definitely moving towards cloud gaming if it's not 5g then um mm-hmm. and what 5g provides you right now wifi already provides you stopping the people who are playing on wifi uh like for this right 5g obviously sure 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 right so and and uh, oh. what we call 5g calls 2 and 1/2g probably so they were already had <laughs> high quality in it um, um so uh so it's it's the technology is there in large areas uh mm-hmm. so and it is the inevitable future like everything is moving away to make this less and less cheaper and cheaper and moving everything as a service on the cloud so that's bound to happen i just don't know how quickly uh, we'll get there for that we'll have to uh, get answers from providers saying how quickly how low latency can you make your services sure um so the reason uh, just a little follow up the reason for the 5g thing was with what we see at least from my experience is uh, if you have countries like india right or even if you have countries uh, in the states and everything i have seen pro- uh, even users kind of you know have that thing that not everyone can either afford or not everyone has the ability to get a broadband connection but 5g is far more easier because you know companies like jio for example who bought 4g in every i would say every corner of india right uh, no paid promotions but uh, yeah because one of those that, that's what i think at least how 5g would help of course specifically uh, yeah. for india yes um mm-hmm. india is the world's cheapest uh, cellular data market the world's mm-hmm. cheapest mm-hmm. Um, nothing mm-hmm. comes close right that's all mm-hmm. thanks to yeah. um yeah. so there is there's no paid promotion we all know the reality <laughs> uh, but 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 from to korea right they have mm-hmm. insane speeds everywhere so and they are a game crazy market also so mm-hmm. we can look at that market to see that assuming bandwidth increases bandwidth become mm-hmm. super easy to get and cheap and all of that mm-hmm. that that market can be a test market for where india could go assuming the, in in terms of technical uh, evolution technology evolution not just market adoption we need to do more work on that but okay um mr rajesh same question yeah so i think uh, a lot of thing that beerul said right is, is absolutely relevant uh, in my view as well uh, and it's uh, really what it is going to become mainstream right and we are seeing that direction it's going that but i think one of the key drivers is going to be the lagless right so latency whatever you want to call it, it has to be without lag yeah. the minute yeah. you start seeing lag the whole experience suffers the experience suffers the interest goes away and 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 the whole yeah. thing goes down right because more and yeah. more we're seeing the whole concept of having physical copies of games whether it's console or a, or a, you know the way you want to bring it into the system to play those cartridges or whatever right it's all gone mm-hmm. i mean it's not yet gone but in a way going so but the, if, if there is a lag the experience of hers and you will have people going back to the older older form factors and that's not going to help uh, in terms of mm-hmm. 5g and uh, and the debate around that see a lot of if you're at home and you're playing it then you have access to broadband right if you do have broadband but a lot of these games mm-hmm. are also being played on the move right uh, we are in lockdown so maybe a different situation right now but when the whole world opens up again people are on the move on constantly whether they're traveling on on work or play or whatever right so they're playing on those that's when network will play a key role and i think 4g today is good but not for the heavy graphic rendered experience that you want to provide it still doesn't serve mm-hmm. it fully so i think that lag and lagless concept is going to be key to driving and making it more mainstream and more and google's doing some work there as well uh, in terms of mm-hmm. you know uh, making internet available to remote parts of the of the world right uh, for basic services around healthcare and other you know uh, areas sure. but i'm sure it'll yeah. get start consuming through entertainment and gaming as well so yeah we're looking at it from that uh, aspect as too yeah definitely definitely actually yeah, that was an interesting thing thing you said about the 4g thing because yeah that is the one thing even we know yeah and we recommend to our customers that please switch to broadband like 
you exactly it's like what it's also it's also about the quality of video mm. uh, because uh, so like suppose i can send someone like 480p video very easily using 4g and they will probably have a lagless experience the moment they switch to 720 that's when the problems start like you know kind of building up and uh, the reason i wanted to ask this question is because uh, what we are like it's almost that the gamers are spoiled at this point Mm. Because we're used to like 120 FPS and you know qual and the console quality or the you know the PC master race quality of gaming yeah. is that cloud gaming has to catch up. It's it's a little behind on what they can provide and also the difficult thing is to manage expectations. Mm. That the user but the key the key uh, bottleneck or at times can be uh, not so much of the device or the game. It's the network, right? The network mm. plays a key role and uh, that's what oh, I yeah. think will start to determine how soon it becomes mainstream. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Mr. Avasi, you'd probably have a, a little bit of a different experience given that you're on both ends of the spectrum here, being the hardware to give us that experience and the guy providing us. What are your thoughts, sir? Right, Salam. So uh, most of our thought process has been around the you know experience that a gamer gets right now and what the new technologies or the future promises. I think mm -hmm. the whole idea right now and the effort from everybody's uh, ecosystem is to basically narrow that particular gap. For example, mm -hmm. with our latest launch that we have recently done in the month of September, we're talking about 8K gaming with 60 FPS. So on the other one side, we are raising the bar uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the realism, realism part. And the moment mm -hmm. we start talking about GeForce now, which is a cloud service, uh, we can't really go back to, you know, uh, something which is very different. I mean, of course, it has it is there in the physical world. Uh, but yeah. the gap has to be a little bit narrow, basically. And that's the challenge yeah. is right now. Rendering the, you know, almost real life uh, scenes and delivering them in a, in, in a real time. Network, of yeah. course, plays a huge role uh, as far as our services are concerned. And as even Rajesh has pointed out, that experience has to be seamless. I mean, it's not that uh, right now we all are home probably one device but when i'm traveling i mean that was like before march then you know i want to <laughs> get to my probably ipad which i was playing mm -hmm. on my pc at home so mm -hmm. yeah of course network dependency is there but uh, how effectively actually we can uh, bridge the gap between uh, a, a pc gaming delivers versus a cloud gaming delivers basically title to title i think that's also going to define it okay all right um Great. I'm going to move to my next question. And actually, this is like, I think this is Virils territory more right now. But uh, content creation, as we know, has taken like a boom in like the last, I would say, five, six years. And in India, in the last couple of years, we've seen tremendous rise of, you know, uh, content creators as well as services like Loco. Uh, so when it comes to cloud, uh, cloud and cloud gaming how do you think both because sometimes i mean yes one like we will point out the one feature about cloud gaming is letting me play the game and they are just taking advantage of the, the simple tech out there in in the entirety of cloud whether it's google gcp or aws or uh we use nvidia's hardware so uh how do you think cloud and cloud gaming can help a content creator and a viewer for example uh Whittle, let's start with you this time um, so in our business, one of the biggest challenges we have is when you are live streaming a game from your phone. So India is a, I don't even call it a mobile first market. It's almost like a mobile only market for games, right? The, mm -hmm. the PC mm -hmm. numbers are so small that it compared to the mobile gamers, it's sure. not yeah. just, um, uh, there are 80 million PUBG plus free fire at a people. I don't think there are 80 million PCs in India. I don't know. Um, 27, but yeah. 27 million PCs or PC gamers? PC gamers. Okay. Oh, wow. That's yeah. one much the number than I thought it was. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> though, so, so, um, so one of our biggest challenges for content creation is people need a really high-end phone for mm -hmm. because their phone has to be able to have juice left in performance in in whatever uh, whatever metric you want of performance mm -hmm. so that they can also then do a 
screen capture, audio capture, do audio mixing, and then upload that to our ingest server so that you can live stream. Mm -hmm. right? So you have this additional requirement of the phones. So mm -hmm. most gamers, if you are, if you have the cash, you will set up a second machine, uh, uh, buy a PC, connect your phone, do a between your phone and the PC and have the, do the head editing of, uh, of encoding, decoding and, and all that. Right. OBS and Elgato and all of those things, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas then suddenly the, the phone is not spending that much effort on playing the game. Work is being done in the cloud. It's free to do other things. So it, it will help yeah. game streamers, live streamers tremendously, tremendously um, yeah. if, if cloud gaming becomes a reality for, for high-end games that other people want to watch, other people play. Um, and also, like, uh, just adding to that point, uh, whether it's, I mean, whether it's mobile or PC, like the one thing, the simplicity, which I think, uh, so I'm not sure if Stadia is live with it or not, uh, Mr. Uh, Rajesh will correct me if I'm wrong, sure. but like the simple thing of just, it's a click of a button and you're live, right? Yes. The, that's the very simplest thing. Uh, so yeah, Mr. Rajesh, just continuing to you. So content creation for us again is uh, again uh, the way we look at it is allowing you know the the content creators to create in a collaborative mode because uh, it's not just one person creating. I mean you have you know big studios who who would design and then build right. It goes through its own phases. And how how can they leverage the power of uh, cloud technology for that? Or what I mean by that is uh, you know whether they're sitting in office and now working remotely. So there are partners of Google Cloud who build special. Uh, you know, solutions for content creators and leverage the underlying cloud technology effectively for you to be able to do it in a remote manner as well, if required, right? And also mm -hmm. look at collaborating some, you know, look at it as a, uh, you know, part of a larger puzzle and people working on different pieces and in the end it comes together. So we're investing in in that aspect and working with some of our partners to build that capability on, on Google Cloud. The second thing mm -hmm. is around the whole thing that we all keep talking about is using machine learning, right? And that's so, uh, it's, it's a buzzword, but it's reality as well. Uh, mm -hmm. How can you use ML to to make it more engaging for users? Because at the end of the day, all game companies want to make money, right? It's not, uh, entertainment is one, but you want to monetize it at some point in time of the, of the game uh, cycle, right? And that's when sure. we think about how do you start monetizing? How do you start making those right recommendations uh, to which type of profiles? Uh, what would uh, matter, what would not matter. And there are a whole lot of ML services that run on cloud providers like GCP and others, and where content creators can make it part of the inherent inherent play, right? And the last piece is from a content creator point of view is also looking at all the security aspects of it, because we forget that, right? Just as soon as you move to cloud, it becomes open yeah. for other people to start to interfere with it, right? Uh, how do you make sure yeah. that you are you make it watertight and and even factor in uh, the security element around around gaming. So that's where we are investing too. So multiple areas again, as I said, uh, collaborating mm -hmm. remotely using the power of ML and the whole security angle that goes into it. And, and Google's been doing a whole lot of research work in this space. That actually, that actually sounds really cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to get I'll have to actually research more on that. I have no <laughs> idea you guys are doing all of this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, um, so that's the same question uh, given, uh, I mean, NVIDIA at the end of the day is helping a lot of uh, content creators uh, with it. So yeah, what's your uh, perspective on this? Yeah, so uh, you're right. I mean, the, on one side we have the gamers, on the other side we have enterprise uh, through these uh, services. But in, in, in between we have this huge universe called content creator, which yeah. sometimes take advantage of one side or from the other side. <laughs> what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to bring these four things, the best of both worlds together. And we have a program mm -hmm. called NVIDIA Studio. That program is entirely for the content creator. There is a very little element of the cloud part also in it, but mostly it is, you know, uh, on-prem, uh, basically on your device kind of uh, services that we have. Content creation, mm -hmm. of course, is a massive opportunity for all of us, uh, especially mm -hmm. around the GPU side of it. And uh, yeah, so we are enabling uh, those creators with the GPUs, with the tools basically for it, with various SDKs. 
and they can mm -hmm. take advantage of the cloud uh, services to use the same kind of uh, you know uh, both hardware and the SDKs from there. So yes, I mean we don't have essentially a dedicated cloud uh, gaming. Uh, we have a gaming service, but not a uh, cloud service dedicated to the creators as well. Um, actually, that's cool. Actually, that made me think of something. Will you be actually? This is a good question for you, given that you have uh, three people who are that either directly or indirectly connected to a cloud gaming service. Uh, what do you think? Because I mean, you're like the closest to a content creator as it gets. What do you think, or do you think there are any suggestions you would give to a cloud gaming service that you can't give to you know? Xbox or PlayStation or a PC uh, or a PC, uh, you know, uh, manufacturer. Like, is there something you think? Because at the end of the day, we control the software and the hardware, and it's quite easy for us to implement changes. Is there any suggestion do you think a streamer would appreciate about? Um, couple of small things. I mean, mm -hmm. from the streamer's point of view, um, mm -hmm. almost all successful game streamers. Um, composite their scene together, right? They have a webcam, um, mm -hmm. they have their audio, they have game audio, all of that put in together. So um, being, so right now how they would do it is they would just do a screen, screen grab through OBS and put all these things together. One big feature I would recommend people add to, uh, to support content creators is have people send them their, send uh, the game services, their camera feeds and their audio feeds and give a small mm -hmm. dashboard where you can composite a scene saying i want my camera feed to the bottom right mm -hmm. i want this little graphic playing or this gif playing on the bottom left which is like donate sure. money, blah 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 and mm -hmm. and that composition can be done by the cloud gaming provider um because you have access to the highest quality uh rendered game yeah. Whereas I might be, I might have a crappy phone, so I might be looking at a uh, 80 FPS, 70 FPS, but you have 120 FPS, beautiful, available behind. Yeah. So you can put yeah. a gorgeous team together and then send it out to whoever. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a valid suggestion. Uh, we ourselves had a, um, like, it's part of our uh, features that are still not available yet. But uh, that's what you actually pinpointed that was uh, because we, when we send uh, any kind of uh, video to the customer, what we're doing is we're literally for taking the pixels out of the graphic card as soon as it's rendered. So yeah, it, uh, and when we did a pilot for it, when we were showing our investors and whatever, or whatever not, the first thing we did is we also showed a stream of someone playing uh, I don't even remember the game was if it was Jedi Fallen Order or something, and we showed the guy playing the game, and at the same time we had a guy on a different uh, computer just sitting and watching the game. And the reason we couldn't like directly show it to our investors of because what we found out like the video the second guy was betting was better than the first guy because you know he was connected to the 4G and that's why he was playing via controller on his phone, and the second guy he was just getting like a YouTube link directly. So that's actually a valid point, um, and. To be honest, this is something we can look at very easily. I know, um, I know. So the, the yeah. compositing part is the hard part. You have to make some user facing tools. But at the very mm -hmm. least, don't force me to capture my screen. Let me just put in the ingest URL for YouTube or Loco or whoever, wherever you have Twitch. Mm -hmm. Let me just yeah. put in the, that RTMP ingest.loco.com or loco.gg with the Steam mm -hmm. and all that. And just send it in. And then let me also give you my camera feed. Yeah, that also that takes care of a lot of because one of the big drawbacks about content creation with like suppose if I want to do content creation, for example, I like doing it. There is an inherent investment in it, right? Like the, there's the PC, there's the second PC sometimes or someone has and the webcam. I was telling and, earlier saying uh, that's yeah. what I said. Uh, that's what I answered in my in the previous question, which is mm -hmm. cloud gaming because it takes away so much of your resources. Uh, mm -hmm. gives back computer resources back to the device. Now it is free to do streaming. So a lower end yeah. phone will be able to stream. Yeah. Right. And um, so yeah. I make it even simpler by saying no need to screen capture also. Just send me whatever else you want. We'll put it all together into a scene 
give you a little web base tool to compose your scene, and then it'll pop mm -hmm. it out to wherever you want to send it to. Um, that's great, Tam. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think my next next question was supposed to be about Lumberyard and everything, but given that we've sort of answered this before, uh, I'm gonna actually sw uh, substitute it with a question I actually thought of, which is um, about VR. So yeah, I mean, I know understand the fact that uh, VR again is just like cloud gaming. I would say just before cloud gaming, VR has its big moment, and I think it's still going on given that. Uh, Half Life, which is like one of the biggest games, uh, like of our generation, just came out with its just VR game. So, what do you think? How cloud gaming and VR can come together? How do you think that will help out? Um, Mr. Vasil, let's start with you this time. I know it's a little I bit think... of a new question, but yeah, <laughs> it is actually. Uh, but you know, uh, very very close to our heart because it involves graphics. And creating a truly immersive VR experience basically demands precise simulation of our environment, which mm -hmm. includes graphics, which includes audio and the behavior as well. Mm -hmm. And one of the gaming technologies that we have, GeForce RTX technology, basically exactly does that only. It takes advantage of the real time ray tracing and AI and mm -hmm. advanced VR shading and put everything together. Uh, you basically can take, take the VR simulation to a level of realism, which is far beyond what is possible with a traditional rendering. And mm -hmm. it is all driven by a combination of the hardware, which is of course the GPU, and mm -hmm. uh, the SDKs that we have called VR Works, uh, which is uh, available as a free download, of course, for the developers. So mm -hmm. the combination of, I think, all these things, uh, one can, uh, of course, create uh, uh, almost uh, real life uh, vr experience basically and uh, we have seen the implementation in few of the games one you have already mentioned and that mm -hmm. implementation is actually increasing as we speak because not only on the gaming side of it i have, i'm gonna let you in a small secret but even on the enterprise side of it as well uh, so yeah there is something which is called omniverse that nvidia has been working on and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see the implementation of Omniverse pretty soon, which again talks about the same VR AR uh, technology. Okay, that's, that's actually pretty great. Can you tell us any upcoming games that I can expect? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I can't because that's, that's, <laughs> that's the rights of the publishers to announce it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The one I can the, I can tell you that lots of publishers are actually working on it using that's some older game titles. That's actually great. I'm actually glad I'm asking this question. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ajusha, same question yeah, to so you. Again, uh, yeah, yeah, VR, of course, is, uh, is is getting more and more popular as well, right? Like we like mm -hmm. gaming in general. Uh, and there again, uh, it uses a lot of needs a lot of resources, I must say, right? Because when you're building a virtual reality environment, you also want to test all the different scenarios and simulations that you do, right? And when you're doing the mm -hmm. simulations, you don't want to be constrained by the resources that you have. And cloud opens up uh, those resources for you to be able to uh, create those simulations and then push it mm -hmm. for consumption through a through a, a VR consumption channel, right? And that's yeah. the other part of it, which means uh, you build models, whether they're machine learning models or you build your core uh, services, right? You want them to be able mm -hmm. to run on the edge. So think about VR as an edge, right? It's another term. It's essentially an edge. Uh, well, it's computing in a way, right? How do we ensure yeah. that we're able to run a very heavy, sophisticated model and run it on an edge in a mode that is, a, again, not compromising on experience, right? And making all the updates and uh, whatever is needed. So that's our focus. One is to make it make the simulations available on a on a broader environment and mm -hmm. make them light enough to be able to run on the edge, such as a VR device. So those are two key factors. Because if you look at the broader gaming, Google's been investing in things like uh, Agonis, which is an open source uh, service that you can build. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or it's investing in things like Open Match, so allowing you to match players with the right, all built on open source, right? And then when you mm -hmm. start to look at AR, VR, can I run those same services onto, onto those devices? Or do we package them in a way, in a lightweight fashion, without compromising yeah. much of the functionality? So that's yeah. what, that's the direction we're thinking on, yeah. That's great. Um, Will, what are your thoughts on this? Um, you'll have to stop me from talking about this. I spent seven years, uh, six years <laughs> of my life uh, building HoloLens for Microsoft. Okay. I was the oh, founding team of HoloLens. Um, oh, that's amazing. 
Um, so um, I'm not very bullish on uh, cloud gaming and VR. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the biggest challenges in VR, um, well, the the remaining large challenge on VR, a lot of the challenges have been solved, is mm-hmm. uh, this this concept called. Uh, uh, there are many terms for it, but the, the term that is motion to photon. Basically, if you have a VR headset on your face, and mm-hmm. if you're just watching a movie where you don't expect the you moving your head to actually move the scene, then it's fine. Then 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 it's yeah. just a scene that's very close to your eyes. That's a that's yeah. a whole different thing. But now with VR, you expect to be able to move your head, right? And mm-hmm. and see see different scenes. You see want to see the scene move. Mm-hmm. Um in that case, it is the there is a latency involved where the motion of your head, so motion to photon when the photon emits from the screen and hits your eyes. Screen. Yeah. That latency is super important. And human brains okay. are super evolved to find any lag more than 50 milliseconds there yeah. to be perceived as you're being poisoned and you will puke. <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, that is what motion sickness actually is. Motion sickness yeah, is okay. because yeah, your yeah, yeah. body is moving, but your eyes don't see the motion. So the body interprets mm-hmm. it as you have been poisoned. Let me let me puke everything out in the hopes that okay. right. That's that's your motion sickness problem. Um, yeah, a lot okay. of systems have motion sickness problem. Now you are saying this tight loop that we have to create between my moving my head even by slightly, mm-hmm. and the scene has mm-hmm. to move equivalently now mm-hmm. not only that loop has to go from the pc back so from my mm-hmm. uh, sensors to the pc you recompute the scene and send it back to the eyes not only that but now you're going to take that all the way to the cloud that that input that button input yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it all the way to the cloud and bring it back yeah. uh, i mean we were just talking about will we be able to solve latencies for normal games um so um, I'm not very like we are far away. All the cloud gaming, legit properly for regular screen-based games before yeah. we get up to solving it for VR, uh, because this is sure. actually a huge issue. It's a massive issue. Um, so all of the help and all of the technologies out there are useful mm-hmm. to be able to make VR games faster. Engines have been created, APIs have been created, uh, mm-hmm. different mechanisms for using the GPU to speed up this. Mm -hmm. uh, There are a few other techniques. Uh, I think Oculus calls it time warp. Uh, Microsoft calls late stage reprojection. Bunch of different terms Mm -hmm. around that to speed this process. Um, But we are still far away from cloud gaming and VR together. I'm sorry, I can keep going on and on and on for this because I've spent... (laughs) No, I, I can I can see that, but the thing is, uh, this has definitely piqued my interest because the thing is, this was our next project, so we do research like three months ahead of what we're trying to do, and VR was supposed to be our next project. So I'm getting into it now. Like you've given kind uh, of given me a challenge that <laughs> reach out to me after. I have to, I have to get into this now. <laughs> reach out to me after this uh, call and we. Can... Oh, definitely, de- definitely. I'm gonna have my like my whole tech team up there. Uh, and I yeah, actually, uh, given that now we have like uh, like uh, six, seven minutes left, uh, instead of asking the question I prepared, let's just go to the uh, questions uh, that have been sent to us via the audience. Um, so the first one is, uh, it's a little partial, which is the best cloud gaming service provider in India. It's me. It's called the Gaming Project. The second is what, uh, so like actually the ones that, Actually, yeah, uh, this is something that you could have sort of answer that what is the opinion on gaming parlors with cloud gaming and, uh, and VR? What do you think will happen to gaming parlors? Um, like, yeah, we're, uh, let's go with the uh, Rajesh this time. Yeah, you're the you're you're actually with the service Rajesh and Pawan. You guys are uh, like the services are live in places where I'm guessing you already have some competitors. So what are your thoughts on that? So yeah, I mean it's it's going to be a, uh, you've got to look at it as, as a segment, right? I don't think it's uh, right to just say it will replace the, the gaming mm-hmm. parlors completely. Everything mm-hmm. will will carve a niche for itself, right? So there will be a segment of users 
who would want to you know enjoy it on a on a big uh, android tv hopefully right on a 65 inch tv which that gives that own experience and cloud gaming will enable that without having a big yeah. device there there are yeah. others who still enjoy the whole ambiance of a of a parlor and not just the game right so uh, the experience of that is quite different so i think it'll be yeah. segment wise although it will eat into it i would say and who knows the parlors might still replace their slot machines with a big tv there and make it cloud gaming with <laughs> the parlors right that could be the business yeah. model we don't know yet yeah uh, that's not yeah. happened yet but that's the way it could end up going so initially i think you'll have different segments catering to different and over time like i said it might merge so that's the way i i look at it yeah um yeah actually sounds interesting uh mr alexi same question yeah so i think parlors uh, i can answer it up front are going to uh, you know uh, uh when i joined this company nvidia way back in 2007 um, i joined uh, almost 13 14 years back my first assignment in 2007 was to establish gaming cafes in india uh, okay so that was my first assignment and uh, mm-hmm. and we have a, a official program also we call it certified gaming cafes uh, we the word used here is i cafe because essentially it comes from china where they are in thousands and each i cafe has got probably you know hundreds of tha- you know hundreds and two hundreds of kind of a seats over there we don't have that mm-hmm. in, in india we have a smaller cafes but some really nice fun cafes that we have seen unfortunately because of this pandemic situation all of them are yeah. in the lockdown and un- very unfortunate yeah. But before yeah. the pandemic situation, lots of uh, investor from the China and the other countries has started coming into India, and they had some really jazzy looking cafes in the country. So coming back to the original question, because the cafes uh, doesn't really matter whether you have a good device or you have a, a mediocre device in the cafe. I think it's the feeling of the community, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, just like any other sports, uh, being together with the competitive uh, you know athletes in the same arena. Mm-hmm makes lots of difference and being virtually connected to them unfortunately mm-hmm. most of the guys are connected virtually right now but given a choice i'm sure they are all going to they're all just waiting to rush back to the cafes that are there in india and there are at least to the my, my last count at least 500 of them that i'm aware of uh, so yeah it's a it's a sizable uh, universe that we have in india as far as the pc gaming cafes are concerned i'm not counting yes, yes. the other one so yes mm-hmm. um, uh, with the cloud gaming, again, I don't think so that physical cafe space are, is going to go away anytime soon. The devices will get replaced probably, but that's about it. The ambience is, yeah, that is one thing that the ambience, hard, the to, take, yeah, hard to take away. The arena is more important. Yeah. Um, we're the same question. What do you think? Like, I mean, I know gaming cafes are one thing, but I've also seen a lot of, uh, you know, uh, people content creators also to like make their videos in gaming cafes so how do you think this is going to help us um content creators a lot of content creators might not have the the webcam and the pc to stream and all of that so that helps mm-hmm. uh, but uh, we are primarily focused on mobile games so you can mm-hmm. create content anywhere as long as you have a good internet connection um mm-hmm. so it is always good to have a space for people to have content creators come. In, uh, we actually have a gaming center, local gaming center in Noida, where uh, mm. any one of our streamers are welcome to show up. You facilities, we have nice PCs with all the games that they want and all the Elgato and all these software set up and good internet connection and all of that set up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we can have a, it's not technically a parlor, but you can come there and stream on local and play whatever yeah. games you have. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, unfortunately, I have no clue about the part ecosystem in India. I have no idea. So I don't really have an opinion on on that. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, that's quite all right. And uh, given that we have, oh yeah, we're about to end the session actually. Uh, so yeah, I'd just like to first of all thank all of you uh, for your amazing perspective. Uh, I'm not sure, all like a lot of you, if like, you know if you're hardcore gamers or not, but your perspectives are amazing, especially to a cloud gaming or a young cloud gaming uh, service like uh, mine, and the fact that uh, we have people just like Viral said long, like you know, in the starting of the call, we have smart people like you guys actually working on issues that can solve it because 
uh, from my perspective, cloud gaming is the one thing that just helps me game. Like, you know, I don't need to invest. I don't need to go buy or, you know, save money because that's what I used to do in my school and college days. You save money so I can play a game. And now I don't need to do that. Uh, so yeah, so just on an ending note, like to thank everyone, uh, Rajesh and Pawan, and yeah, if you guys have any thoughts, just uh, please, the stage is yours. Uh, no, I think uh, thank you very much for hosting us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Same thing. It was uh, Saran. Thank you so much for hosting us. I think it's been a great discussion. Look forward to taking it further. Yeah. Um, you thank. All our panelists, thank you, Saram. Thank you so much. Thank you for the amazing session. Thank you to the audience. And we will be back with yet another exciting session shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.